Good morning. The music you just heard from Jackie signals the beginning of service, so please make your way to your seats. If you have a joy or sorrow you'd like to share, you still have time to bring it up in the little basket. Halloween party. So we're having, instead of worship service, we're having a little Halloween party next week. So please come and you can be in costumes or not. And we will have games and crafts and music and candy. Please bring a snack to share. And we are having our 15 year anniversary San Gabriel this year. We think it already passed, but we're gonna celebrate it now, uh, later on in the year. So if you would like to help with that, please let Karina know if you can help with decorations or contribute to a timeline of the major events. What we're trying to do is create a timeline for St. Gabriel, including founders, and perhaps having some conversations with them so we can visually look at something and say, this is where we've been, and this is where we are now, so we can vision for the future. And our little free pantry still needs some donations. I saw some people bring them in this morning. Thank you. And uh, COVID contact tracing. Please let our board president, Molly Hornbuckle, know if you test positive. And Jay McMillan was scheduled to have a talk on spirituality and art, and he is unable to make it. And Sarah has a message about the art. Of course, we're missing Jay this morning, uh, but if you will look around, his pieces are the ones currently on our walls, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll be able to get to hear his presentation at a later date. Um, these pieces, as we have been uh, doing every month, will be coming down um, next Sunday. And then November 6th, we plan to have a potluck of art, and you may see it uh, worded a little differently in your yellow papers. Um, we are looking for folks to bring one to three pieces, and we will get those installed uh, after the service on November 6th. And if you can't be here on November 6th, please uh, get with me and we'll set up a different time because I'm available through the week to come bring those pieces inside. Good morning. I just wanted to say I was at um, Liberal Religious Educators Conference last week, and I was able to chat with our UUA president, uh, Reverend Susan Frederick Gray, and I bring you greetings from her. It turns out her husband is from Round Rock originally, and so she is from very familiar with our area. But she just wanted to, I just wanted to take a moment to tell you that she in particular sends you greetings. Um, and I also mistakenly uh, forgot an announcement that was sent to me this week. And please see Chuck for more Chuck Collins for more details about this event next Saturday on the 29th at First United Methodist. It's a workforce affordable housing summit, um, and you can learn more details from Chuck about that. It's on Sunday on Saturday morning at nine to, till three. Actually, it's an all-day event. Good morning and welcome to San Gabriel Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or watching at home, we are so glad to have you here. My name is Sarah and my pronouns are, well, any apply. That's a long conversation. And I have been a part of this con uh, congregation and serving this fellowship since 2015. 
And fun fact, during my joining ceremony, I was actually on uh, very strong prescription medications, and I was the only person who was not uh, focused enough to speak <laughs> at that time, and Mark did not warn us. San Gabriel is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association, and if you would like to know more about us and learn about upcoming events, please go to our website and sign up for our newsletter. Please know that whoever you are, wherever you are from, whomever you love, wherever you are on life's journey, whatever your gender identity or immigration status, you are welcome here. Let's greet this day in song. Our opening hymn is number 121. We'll build a land. The words brothers and sisters in chorus have been updated to siblings in spirit with the approval of the composer. Please include this new language each time we sing the chorus on the second page. Come build a land where siblings in spirit, anointed by God, may then create peace. And please rise if you would in body or spirit. The music is in the gray hymnal and the lyrics will be projected. Activism is expressed in many ways. People can show up to write postcards, 
attend rallies, line the streets and protest. Many of us here are part of such actions, and art is another way to express how we feel and to riot and rage against injustices all around us. Activism that includes the written word, music, a painting, murals, political cartoons, and even architecture shows us that art as activism is a very special thing. Artwork like that of Picasso comes to mind when I think of art and activism. Picasso created Guernica and sent a strong message in 1937. The scene occurs where on the left, a wild bull eye with his tail suggesting rising smoke stands over and a grieving woman holding a dead child is in her arms. A horse falls into agony in the center of the room with a large gaping hole in its side as if it had just been run through by a spear or a javelin. A dead and dismembered soldier lies under the horse. Daggers that suggest screaming have replaced the tongues of the horse, the bull, and the grieving woman. To the bull's right, a dove appears on a cracked wall through which bright light from the outside shines, and on and on. The piece is tragic, sad, desperate, and reeks of the human spirit in struggle. Another artist who I think about is Margaret D. H. Keene, who died this year in June. She was an American artist known for her paintings of subjects with big eyes. If you are a Tim Burton fan, you may have seen the movie Big Eyes. It was based off that. That came out in 2014. She painted mainly women, children, and animals in oils or mixed media. When she was two, her eardrum was permanently damaged during a mastoid, mastoid operation. Unable to hear properly, she learned to watch the eyes of people talking to her to understand them, and this was part of her inspiration. Margaret married Walter Keene, who began selling her work and claiming it was his. After Margaret Keene revealed the truth, a paint-off happened between Margaret and Walter, and this was staged in San, Francisco, San Francisco's Union Square, but Walter did not show up. In 1986, she sued both Walter and the USA Today in federal court for an article claiming Walter was the real artist. At the trial, the judge famously ordered both Walter and Margaret to each create a big-eyed painting in the courtroom in live time to determine who was telling the truth. Walter declined, <laughs> citing he had a sore shoulder. Whereas Margaret completed her painting in 53 minutes. After a three week trial, the jury awarded her $4 million in damages. Sometimes you have to go to great lengths to make yourself visible to others, even when people don't listen to you, even when people make excuses, even when people don't believe you when you say you are who you really are. But if you keep fighting for yourself to make yourself visible, eventually, you will be seen. This happens faster with the help of allies. The way I began to make myself visible was through Unitarian Universalism and polity. I think of our UU polity as a type of art, and we have a way to communicate to help the world see who we are and how we live out our UU values every day. We often say revelation is not sealed, like a painting that changes over time or gets updated where we learn something new about the piece. So too goes how we choose to govern and be in relationship with one another. Sometimes this is better demonstrated in video. So today we have a video of the sixth source I initiated. If this doesn't mean anything to you, it is okay, I will explain. Inside of your hymnals on page five sits our seven principles and six sources. That's how we come to our values. We often say we are not a religion of creed. We follow these principles and sources instead. They get to be updated as such. The last update happened in 1993, and then it happened in 2018 from initiation I started. 
We have a video that explains the process, the literal point of voting at General Assembly, which is our annual conference where business is decided. Anything from divesting from Israel to congregational stuff, so top level to bottom level, is decided at GA. So we're gonna queue up the video, so if you've never been to GA, don't worry about it, we're bringing GA to you this morning, and we'll hear more about art and activism later on in the service. We're about to do a, the change to principles and purposes. I just wanna say this before we do the motion. As this proposed bylaw change received over a four-fifths vote at last year's General Assembly, no amendments to this proposed change are allowed this year. And so it was submitted by, from over 15 certified congregations in 2017. Final adoption shall require a two-thirds vote at this General Assembly. I recognize the people at the procedure mic. Hi, my name is Jamie Andel, and I am a delegate member and affiliate minister of First Unitarian Church of Toledo from Toledo, Ohio, where I serve the community as a hospice chaplain, and I'm responsible for this change update. Removing women and men and updating that language to prophetic people allows for the inclusion of all persons of all gender identities and expressions. Our polity is such that we are able to shine the spotlight on our own covenant. The strength of our living tradition means we are a part of a covenant in which revelation is always being revealed. We're at that moment right now. I want to thank my mentor, Reverend Dr. Susan Ritchie, my church, First Unitarian Church of Toledo, the 16 churches that submitted paperwork so that we could get to this point, the folks who voted last year to pass this through preliminary vote, and all that have helped. And by strengthening the voice of the marginalized among us, working together, we're able to do the larger work in the world. So will you please make the motion? Hang on one second. So I have a little bit of anxiety. I would like to make the motion that we change the wording from women and men to people. Thank you. Can I have a second? All righty. The motion's on the floor. Okay, so before we vote. Your chairs are dangerous, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> before we vote, we'd like you to have an opportunity to reflect a little bit. Some of you were not at General Assembly last year, and so this may be a new um, concept for you. So please turn to the people sitting around you. Try to talk to somebody you don't already know. And consider these questions. In what ways does this proposed change improve the language of our second source? What concerns do you have about the proposed change? And overall, how are you feeling about this proposed amendment to our bylaws, and specifically one of the sources of our living tradition? And you have three minutes. I recognize the delegate at the pro mic. Um, my name is Brenna Kaler. I am from the Smooch congregation. Um, this is written by my friend Icarus. Um, when I started using they, them pronouns, I was scared to tell people it was always just he slash her. I currently use he, they, and Icarus, but I'm still scared to tell them. I didn't know very many non-binary non people. I even felt like I was going to be judged by those people. I was told that I was invalid by someone, so I went back to the closet. I finally came back out again, and I felt free. Now I can feel like I can tell people. So that's a pro from one of my friends. Thank you. There is no one at the concern mic. I have no one in the off-site queue, which tells me you are ready to vote. So that you remember,
we are not able to amend this. Final passage requires a two-thirds majority vote. I have a little tablet that tells me when the off-site delegates are voting. It takes them more time to see the live stream. So it will take a little bit more time for us to know what the final vote is. Make sense to everyone? Fantastic. Okay, we are ready to vote. All those in favor of changing the language of women and men to people, please indicate by raising your yellow delegate voting cards now. All those opposed? You can put your cards down. We'll wait for the offsite. Let's see the off-site vote. The motion clearly passes. Let us now light. Do we know what's up with that? Let us now light our chalice, the symbol of our faith, with these words from our own Reverend Jamie himself. We light this chalice as a symbol of our faith for the promise of a new day, for the renewal of belonging, for the connection between and beyond all that is, all that was, and all that is yet to come. May our many sparks meet and merge in communion of heart and soul to greet this day. It's now time for our affirmation. Our affirmation is an expression of our covenant with one another. Please read after me and the words will be projected. The doctrine of this church is love. The quest of truth is its sacrament. We are here to learn. Service is its prayer. We are here to care for others. To dwell together in peace. We are here to live in peace. To seek knowledge in freedom. We are here to honor our differences. To serve humanity in fellowship. To the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. We are here to grow. Thus do we covenant with each other. This And it's now time for our wonder box. And I believe Karina is here to share it with us. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Got lots of things with me. All right. We use this time to hear from each other and to listen to one another and to learn together as we practice part of that covenant to grow and help support each other in our growth. So I'm going to shake it and give it you some clues. Fairly noisy today. Any thoughts as to what might be in here? Ballpoint pens. Ballpoint pens. What else have we got? Anything else? Crayons. Dominoes. Rocks. Marbles. Paint brushes. All right. Those are all excellent guesses. Many of you are right. We've got a crayon. Markers, pencil, yes, even paintbrush, and colored pencil, 
markers and, believe it or not, when you are married to someone who's an IT guy, you even have keyboards that will fit inside such a box. It's, a, it's an actual working keyboard. Well, tell me, what do all these things have in common? You can create with them. What else? Communicate with them. Yes, they're tools for communication. All right. We're going to do a ritual together now. And that ritual is there to help us do something that might feel odd or strange to you. We are going to write in our books. So look around you for a pen or a pencil. We are going to write in our hymnals. Because the power of the written word is well known. And though change can be scary, this is a bridge. It won't be long before we have new hymnals. There is a process that the UUA is undergoing right now to adopt and publish new hymnals that will change many of the things that are in both of our hymnals. But right now, we need to update our hymnal so that it reflects the change that you just saw Reverend Jamie initiate at GA at General Assembly in 2017. So to help us do this hard work, we have created a ritual for this, a ritual that was created by um, Margie, oh my goodness, where is her, her data, her info? She was a uh, member at uh, Margie Levine Young, a member of the UU Society of Ch Champlain Valley that's going to help us through this moment. So, I'll say again, hello, my name is Karina, my pronouns are she, her, and I'm here to conduct the ritual correcting of the second source. Unitarian Universalist congregations affirm and promote seven principles, which we hold as strong values and moral guides, and as we live out these principles, we draw from six sources, which were adopted by the UUA in 1984. The second source reads, words and deeds of prophetic women and men, which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. This wording, women and men, is limiting. A change that was initiated by and was a labor of love by Reverend Jamie Yandel, a non-binary trans chaplain at the time. Not only did the change support and include non-binary people, it also expanded the pool of prophets to include children and youth. The amendment needed to pass twice, and it did in 2017 and 2018. And the second source now refers to words and deeds of prophetic people which challenge us to confront powers and structures of evil with justice, compassion, and the transforming power of love. The second source has been corrected on the UUA.org website and in new UUA publications. However, existing printed versions of the sources don't self-correct. Hence this ritual, and today we get to do some art. Please open Singing the Living Tradition, Singing the Living, Tra Living Tradition, your gray hymnal to the front and flip one, two, three, four, five pages from the front. On the left side of the book is the list of the seven principles and the six sources. The second source, the one beginning, words and deeds. All right, it's still wrong in there. You should find a pen on your seat or nearby. Please use it to neatly cross out the phrase, women and men, and write in people just above it or next to it in all of that blank space there. You can draw an arrow if you need to. Just make it work. We're going to cross out with a pen, women and men, and write people. All right. It goes against everything we've been taught. 
But now is the time to do it. And now you can open Singing the Journey, your teal hymnal, and flip one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages from the front and make the same correction. I'll give you a minute to do that. Of course, not all of our hymnals are in use today. In Sundays to come, if you get a hymnal that doesn't have this correction, feel free to correct it. And let us now all say, hallelujah. <laughs> it has been done. I want to hear you. Hallelujah. It's been done. Thank you so much. And that is our Wonderbox moment for today. And I'm in the back with crafts, per usual, along with Spoon and Hush, if you'd like to come see us <laughs> and get something. Even if none of this makes any sense to you and you're not sure what you did, rest assured it's a big, big deal. And this is the first time that I have been a part of the ritual with a congregation, and I'm so happy that it is you all. And now it is time for our second hymn. Let us sing together hymn number 1028 or 1028, The Fire of Commitment. Music is in the teal hymnal. The lyrics will be projected, and Jackie will play the melody through one time as an introduction before we sing.
I began this journey of updating the second source with the goal of full inclusion of all gender identities and expressions, as well as making our second source more inclusive of children and youth. And yet I know that this language update is only part of a much larger picture that I and so many others continue to work toward. It was and still up to the people to support and show up for trans and non-binary persons in our congregations, our communities, our association, and our world. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking on the Transforming Hearts Collective. I cannot tell you how powerful that is to know as a parish minister you're taking this seriously. Because our covenant lives with us, breathes with us, and the second we allow it to collect dust, that means we're outside of it. We're outside of the very point of its creation. Updating the second source invites more people into covenant with our faith and its communities and brings us our sacred promises. It brings it to life in the modern world. We must continue on this journey to widen the circle, to invite and include all persons into our covenants, and build beloved community together for centuries to come. Revelation is not sealed. May this statement become our prayer and a practice, not simply a tenant of our faith. Amen and blessed be. We take an offering each week to sustain this space that we call home and to support the work of our fellowship. We're grateful for the San Gabriel Family Choir for providing the music. The song, We Are a Gentle Angry People, was written by Holly Near in response to the 1978 assassination of Harvey Milk, who was a member of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors. Milk was the first openly gay elected official in the US and created the first law to ban discrimination based on sexual orientation. The offering will now be gratefully received and we thank you. Singing, singing for our lives. 
We are a gentle, loving people, and we are singing, singing for our lives. We are a gentle, loving people, and we are singing, singing for our lives. Thank you to everybody who made this service happen, all of you for updating the second source. Our tech team, Jackie, Sarah, Karina, all the folks who are behind the scenes and all of us present. Just a reminder, there's a Halloween party next Sunday and we need some help with the anniversary. And our little free pantry needs a little help too, so lots of help. And now we'll have our chalice extinguishing we close our sacred time together when we extinguish our chalice. We extinguish this flame, but not the chalice inside of our hearts, which serves as a beacon of hope. Emboldened by its blaze, we are reminded that our strength as prophetic and powerful people is found when we come together at San Gabriel, which is here in Georgetown to stay, no matter what may come our way.